Today in our 2010 Ford F-150 Super Cab two-wheel drive, we'll be installing the airlift ride control helper springs for the rear axle, part number AL59568. Now for video purposes, we'll only be showing the driver's side and you will repeat the same process for over on the passenger side. Everything that we do on the driver's side, again, will be repeated for the passenger side. Now with the spare tire out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and start here on the driver's side. First, we need to go ahead and remove the stock Jones bump stop that is located here on the frame. As you can see here on our stop, there are two alignment pins that will need to be cut off before we can reinstall it. To do this, we use a grinding wheel or a cutoff wheel. Now we're ready to go ahead and put the upper bracket up into place. We'll begin by putting the two J hooks into the frame. The two J hooks will go into the two outside slots on the frame as shown here. Now for the bump stop, we're gonna go ahead and replace the bolt with a bolt that's supplied with the kit as well as the lock washer. Now we'll go ahead and put the bolt as well as the lock washer into the bump stop. Then we'll go ahead and feed it through the hole in the upper bracket and back into the original mounting location on the frame. Now you want to make sure that the two J hooks are secured against the frame and then even pressure is put against it as you tighten down the bump stop. We'll also go ahead and take the flange nut and tighten down on the J hooks. You want to make sure that as you tighten these down that even pressure is applied and you only need about 10 foot pounds of torque on each one. Now we need to take a cutoff wheel or a grinder wheel and remove the front J hook even with the nut. Now that we have this done, now we're ready to go ahead and begin work on our airbags themselves. We'll install the elbow fitting that has already got the pre-coating for thread sealant on it. We'll go ahead and screw it into the top of the airbag, finger tight, followed by tightening no more than two max turns. Make sure while tightening this down that you only tighten down the metal hex nut. Now we'll go ahead and connect the lower bracket to the airbag or the air spring. To connect the airbag to the lower bracket, we'll use the half inch bolt as well as the half inch flat washer. At this time, we'll just snug them down. We need it so that we can still make adjustments of the airbag or air spring at a later time. So just put them a little past hand tight. Now we're ready to go ahead and put our air spring with the lower bracket up into place, aligning the elbow where the air fitting hose will connect through the hole in the upper bracket. Now to do this, since we're on a lift, we went ahead and used a pull jack to help raise the rear of the vehicle up and kind of spread the suspension apart to make this process a little bit easier. If you're working off the ground or off a set of jack stands, a floor jack at the rear tow hitch or area at the rear of the vehicle will also help lift up a little bit and take your weight off your suspension. Now we're ready to go ahead and put the U-bolts that hold the lower bracket into place. The U-bolt will have a flat washer followed by a nylon nut washer put onto each one. We'll go ahead and tighten down all four of the washers and nuts. Now we're ready to go on to the top of the airbag or air spring and we'll put the lock washer on top of that followed by the three quarter inch nylon nut. Again, we'll just go ahead and hand tighten these or just a little bit past hand tight so we can still move them for final adjustment. Now you go ahead and repeat the same process over on the passenger side. Now before we can route our air tubing, we need to go ahead and cut the tubing into equal lengths since both of the air valves have already been pushed on to each of the ends of the tubing. Once we figure out where the center is, we'll go ahead and take a set of tubing cutters and cut it in half. You wanna make sure when you make these cuts that you cut them square. Now we'll be ready to go ahead and we'll be routing our air lines. In this particular case, the customer has asked that we use the bolts where the license plate would be mounted to mount our air valves. To do this though, we had to drill out the holes a little bit larger to allow for the fitting to go through. Now to mount these valves, you'll need to first go ahead and thread one of the 5 16 hex nuts on and then put the star washer onto that. In this case, we found that you want to thread it all the way down as far on as it'll go. And then from the back side, we'll push it through, followed by putting the license plate and the bracket back in place over the top of each of the air valves. Then on the outside, we'll go ahead and put the rubber washer, another 5 16 flat washer, and a second 5 16 hex nut. We'll go ahead and tighten everything down. We'll repeat this for both of the airlines. Now we'll go ahead and route each side airline up to its airbag or air spring. In routing, you want to make sure that you don't do any sharp bends. Also keep away from any sharp edges or any moving parts 
are at least six inches away from any area that may become hot, such as the exhaust or catalytic converter. Now we'll also go ahead and use a few zip ties along the way to help secure the wire and keep it in place. We'll also go ahead and make sure we leave a little excess slack in routing our wires so that if there's any movement it doesn't pull on it, as well as if we need to make any adjustments or repairs later, such as a bad fitting at a valve or at the actual airbag if we need to trim it down and make a new connection. It's a good idea to leave about a foot of extra line just kind of looped around or coiled in a way that you could pull it a little tighter later to make a repair. We can go ahead and put it into the fitting on the top of the airbag or air spring. To do this, you just push firmly into place, making sure that you seat the air line all the way into the air fitting. We'll go ahead and repeat this on the other side of the vehicle. Now we're ready to go ahead and put about 10 pounds of air into each side. Once we have this done, we can go ahead and adjust the bags right and left or front to back to make sure that they line up properly. Once we have the bags aligned in their brackets, we can go ahead and tighten down the bolt that's underneath on each side as well as the top nut. Now that we have this done, we'll go ahead and bump the pressure up to 30 or 40 PSI and take a soapy solution and spray any of our connections to check for leaks. And with that, we'll go ahead and take it down the road and show you how the airbags or air springs work in motion. A quick tech tip, you wanna make sure that you always keep a minimum of five PSI in the airbags or air springs at all time to keep them from being damaged. There's also a maximum PSI rating of 100 PSI. And with that, that'll go ahead and conclude our installation of the Airlift Ride Control Air Helper Spring for the rear axle, part number AL59568 on our 2010 Ford F-150 Super Cab two-wheel drive.